Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm still going to be using Daniel for today because I got sick on Christmas and my voice is a mess at the moment. So it was either use the robot voice or have y'all listen to me sounding like a duck that smokes 20 times a day and I thought I'd save you guys from that. Anyways. Jesus Christ I can't believe another year is over. In some aspects K-pop sucked a lot more than 2021. I.e. members leaving and so many groups disbanding. But in terms of music I'd say it was pretty solid. And even though December is usually a slow month. The groups that came back ended the year in the best way possible. So let's get into reviewing them. This is all of the things that made 3rd gen music great. It slightly reminds me of on and off's We Must Love and maybe something Astro did. The production is far better than what I expected and I like that the song highlighted each of the individual members. I only found out about this debut because people were talking about how the Macni is 27. I honestly think that having older idols is very refreshing and is much needed. The last time I saw an older idol debut would be KB from only one of, or even Solar and Irene. Which is really silly to me cause they were only 23 when they debuted. But seriously I don't understand why people think there's an age cutoff for idols to debut at. Like why do you want all of your faves to debut so freakishly young? I'm not hating on groups that have young members who are in their mid or even early teens. But their young age is definitely a cause for concern over their well-being. I really hope debuting at an older age gets more normalized for boy and girl groups. Especially girl groups cause the general public is especially harsh towards women aging in general. People shouldn't be scrutinized or punished for finding their path later in life. And your 20s are literally for you to figure out what your passion is. I really like this group and I'll always be an advocate for more women and men groups in the industry. This is exactly what we needed to close the year with. God damn it RM why do you have to be so perfect? This song deserves to be the ending score of an epic Oscar winning movie. Forever Rain is one of my fave songs ever. So I immediately fell in love with Wildflower. The lyrics are so sentimental and humble. It's like he's reciting poetry. His own scriptures and parables that he's written to help you get through the tough times and to teach you how to live life to the fullest. Indigo really is his magnum opus as of yet. And his ode to armies. I feel like Eugene's voice is quite similar to Jimin's and I would love to see him and RM perform Wildflower together at a concert in the future. I also love how RM basically rang up all of his friends in the biz for this album cause it just goes to show how far he and BTS have come. Which makes me very proud. The BTS Hyung line really had me at two extremes this year. So it had me shaking my ass to that that and wreaking havoc with arson. And then on the other end of the spectrum, Namjin left me heartbroken and sobbing under my blanket at 4 in the morning. Loved that. Minho put his entire being, soul and actor Minhasi into this debut. Last year Heartbreak had me craving for more of his soft vocals, which still are such a dichotomy to me because he's Shiny's main rapper and his nickname is literally Flaming Charisma Minho. But given the little taste of soloist Minho we got last year, Chase was definitely what I expected him to come out with. Not gonna lie it sounds like it could've been a b-side from Kai's debut solo album but really that's just high praise in my opinion. I wish the chorus could've offered a tiny bit more because the mood of the song remains quite static throughout the song. But then again, that might have been the vision all along in having a soothing song accompanied by an intense music video to showcase his acting skills. Overall I'm just so happy and satisfied that all of the shiny members have become soloists now and that all of their debut EPs rhyme with each other. That's the kind of plagiarism we like to see. Finally, the collaboration that I've been waiting for. My heart pretty much exploded when the first teaser was released. I'm hoping for another future collab that's not for Christmas cause I'm not a big fan of Christmas K-pop songs and I only really like a few of them. I find them to be cheesy which is why I won't be reviewing any other Christmassy release in this review. But no hate if y'all like them. It's just personal taste. Hopefully we'll get a WoW Thing 2.0 in 2023. Plus we're gonna be getting a Got The Beat mini album soon anyways. Hey, 
OMG I never realized that I needed this in my life. And CT Dream releasing a remake of HOT was not on my 2022 bingo chart. My boys really pulled an Esper Dreams come true and gave us this for our Christmas present. SM really understands what they are doing with this formula and honestly more power to them cause it works. This song makes my brain so confused, but in a good way. Like I know it's a HOT song but it just suits NCT Dream so well that it seems like it's theirs. I love that they referenced their old music videos and also brought back the original iconic fits. In all honesty I think Dream should have released this instead of Glitch Mode. Plus it would have paired well with Beatbox 2 as the repackaged single cos of the 90s theme. G-Friend and Luna walked so new jeans could run. I really miss those two groups so I'm really thankful that new jeans are keeping that special aspect of storytelling and dreamy yet upbeat music in K-pop alive in the new generation. Immediately when the song began and Hyeen was doing her thing with her soft vocals, I knew I was in for something special. The song is so simple, yet time and time again, these girls prove that there is beauty in simplicity. In fact simplicity in my opinion leaves more room for artistic expression and audience interpretation. That's a tool that Luna and G Friends team capitalized on in their lore and you can't help but be hooked and descend down the rabbit hole. No pun intended. I like that they are fully committed to the concept and aesthetic they debuted with cause it creates something that is so iconic and wholly new jeans. I'm scared for what's gonna happen when OMG drops cause I don't think I'm ready. I'm on my worst Pledis please let my boy act more, and please let him be an angsty emo more often. Thanks babes. K-pop this year has revived two things, minimalism and punk rock. That's literally what my music taste was like in a nutshell before discovering K-pop so I've loved 2022. This does not sound like K-pop at all, it's more west coast and sounds like it needs to be in an indie coming of age movie. I'm surprised that Vernon didn't rap in this song. I think maybe a rap verse would have been a nice addition but I guess the steady tempo in the verses makes the explosion in the chorus that much more impactful. Plus it seems like Vernon was very committed to the genre so the talk singing he did was very on brand and suited the song's vibe really well. Bruh this is the real Avengers of K-pop. It's the convergence of SM's aces. Well at least some of them. Because they are all main dancers and because the song is called Hot and Cold I was expecting a Zoo 2.0. So I was pleasantly surprised that they did something more smooth and mellow. It's probably my favorite song off the SM Winter album. Zoo and Hot and Cold make me wish we had more co-ed groups or more collabs between boy and girl groups or male and female soloists. I mean they're used to in first and second gen but now there are too many Delulu fans to ruin the fun. SMH. This is Wavy's best song. Go argue with the wall. Label V saw and listened to people's grievances with kickback and they let Wavy return with the sound that put them on the map with Moonwalk. Wavy's way of mixing the classical genre with today's music always amazes me. It's like having a dark and sinister symphony do a gig at a club and it somehow works. It's a majestic banger. It's also so fitting with the concept since they are taking inspiration from the Phantom of the Opera. Despite the song almost being 4 minutes long, I really could have gone another round with the chorus where it just explodes to the point that you start to see the gates of heaven. Or oh, hell cause lord knows this song is deliciously sinful. I had my expectations high when I saw the dark royalty themed teaser images, and these boys did not disappoint. I'd say that this was well worth the long ass wait but I wish we had all 7 of them here. Side note, my boy Yang Yang looks a little too good on the Iron Throne. He should have been crowned Lord of the Seven Kingdoms at the end of Game of Thrones. He was robbed I tell you. Atty's literally ended the year off with a bang. If I ever join a K-pop cult and they don't play this, I'm leaving and making my own. 
The ringing of the knell is such a nice touch to the song since it's showing the death or concluding chapter of a story. The last time I heard that bell was when Idol did Oh My God. I always love it when songs incorporate non-conventional instrumentals or add in something different cause it makes the song feel more epic. This song doesn't feel like K-pop. It feels bigger. There are so many movements in the song. You feel hype. It feels bombastic but not over the top and unserious. But it's also grandiose and makes you swell up with emotions. It's the classic Atties move. Could this possibly be my new favorite Atties song? I did like Gorilla, but I find myself always going back to cyberpunk and I'm afraid it's been living in its shadow this year. But hot damn Halazia really is something else. I'm a sucker for law heavy music videos so I absolutely adore Halazia. My mouth was wide open for the entire duration of the music video on my first viewing. It's definitely one of their most cinematic music videos ever. KQ really should think about pulling a P1 harmony and make a movie out of it. I love the new lore that was introduced and the conclusion of the first string of lore we were introduced to all the way back in Halla Halla. Speaking of which I can't believe it's almost going to be 4 years since the same I name era. I swear it only came out 2 years ago. Looking at how far Atties have come since then makes me so proud and it makes Halla Zia more emotional and personal to me. And now for a little quick fire round of a couple more comebacks I checked out this month. This belongs in a coming of age teen movie. It reminds me of one of my favorite B-side of theirs. Merry Bad Ending. Y'all know me. I love the 90s vibe. However under the skin is far superior in every way possible. Oh hell yeah a co-ed rock band. Everyone please check them out cause they deserve to blow up. Sounds like a West Coast 90s song. Like Kids in America. It's such a perfect summer road trip song and it kind of reminds me of Day 6. I love that Yu Kyung got to re-debut and be in her element cause she was done so dirty by FNC when they decided to change AOA's concept. Yukika's voice just suits the underground speakeasy vibe so well. Hope we get a full-fledged comeback from her in 2023 cause I've missed her too much. For those who love and mix is cool, Taeyeon's Weekend or New Jeans's concept, then this song is definitely for you. Her voice is so cute yet you can also hear a subtle hint of soul in her voice too which suits the dreaminess of the song. Finally they put all of the skiz players in an album. I'm so happy I could cry. I can finally add drive to my midnight car ride playlist on Spotify. I don't keep up to date with most groups Japanese releases so this is the first time I've heard fam and I'm so disappointed with myself. I wish every group could do a song like this cause even though they are low key to sing each other at points. It's so wholesome. I missed her so much this year. It's been so long since Dive With You. She's been teasing a big release coming in 2023 and I am so hyped for it. If it's anything like her debut album then I'm a gonna. Signed my will and everything in preparation for what's coming. Alrighty then. That's all for the video. Thank you all for making 2022 a wonderful year here on the channel. I hope you all have had a lovely and relaxing holiday. Cheers to the new year everyone. Until next time. Stay groovy. Stay safe. Keep smiling. Love you all. Bye bye. Make this